Have you heard the coaches saying, let's get better immediately? They might be right, and I want to share a warning about the hidden shadow side of so-called immediate progress with you. Now I'll break down the three hidden costs of immediate progress these coaches may not want to admit, and I'll show you a better way if you want to ride for another 20 years or the rest of your life. Now look, there's 40 million mountain bikers in the USA alone right now, and riding is harder than we are good at it. We're on a mission to help 10,000 riders shred with confidence, and I want you to go below and do one thing if you're committed to mastering the sport. At the end of this episode, go watch the short video I made for you on the three-phase process in our breakthrough system designed specifically for intermediate mountain bikers stuck on a skill plateau. Watch this video all the way through. Now, let's get started with the three shadow costs. Now, the first shadow cost of immediate improvement, and by far, in my opinion, this is the worst of the three, is that the advice actually works for you. Imagine you grew up riding and you are a self-taught mountain biker. You had that sweet specialized P2 that you rode on downhill trails, or maybe a sweet old Gary Fisher with a tall seat post that you smashed cross country, also known today as downhill. So you're a true mountain biker and you've been teaching yourself for years. Then suddenly you get that job, you fall in love, you find yourself holding that special baby kiddo, and you rise to the occasion. You become not just a mom or a dad, but you 10X your ability to basically give life to another human. And to be honest, even if you don't have kids, having more responsibility at work, look, it's the same. So I'm proud of you. No matter what you're taking care of, you're doing a great job. But wait a second, though. Now that it's been a decade or two and your body doesn't quite work like it used to, you're now responsible, so it would be absolute treachery to skip responsibilities to go practice biking like you did when you were 15. A plus, you have now what I call a mortgage brain. And so even if you're rocking the same wife, same kids, same minivan lifestyle of yours truly, the double diesel, it's not the same. Your courage doesn't work anymore. You find YouTube, you desperately try to search in your spare time for tips, for tricks to make cornering easier. You try to relearn jumping or eliminate some bad habits and you're juggling work, you're juggling life, and here's where you pay the ultimate price. It's as if one of those immediate tips works. And sometimes they really do, and they're good tips. The terrible truth is that sometimes a YouTube trick is exactly what you need to feel like it's working. When in reality, your body is actually copying the body position perfectly using the wrong muscles. And the real price that you pay, I'll tell you the truth, but first let me ask you something. How much do you love riding? How much does mountain biking help your mental health, your physical health? Seriously, I'm asking you. Th think about it. And what would it mean to you to have even better skills than you do now, 10, 20, 30 years from now, so you can ride safely and do fun things? Okay, so it's pretty important to you. So for me, it's what kept me together after my dad died when I was 20. No drugs, no partying, just manuals and midnight rides around campus, that was my drug. And it allowed me to focus. And I got incredibly so much better very slowly. I wasn't that good that fast. But the prize that I won was bike body synthesis, okay? So bike body synthesis. In other words, I built a computer, this, the body, that I could program with any move on command quickly. And this is the first shadow cost of getting better immediately. I don't, I don't care if it's a manual, a drop, a jump, any technique. You can discover rapid improvement, but if you skip over the deep intentional work of mastery first, you entirely miss the exact thing you said you wanted just a minute ago when you said you wanted to ride for 20 more years, okay? So to continue to love riding, it's important that you do it in a healthy way and tips and tricks just won't do it for you. So personally, I wanna say, watch this when my kids bring over their 17 year old friends and I wanna cut some backflips. So what about you though? Maybe simply not being last on a group ride inspires you, super. How about finally jumping or manuals or doing cornering in a really smooth way or downhill racing? Go focus on building your bike body synthesis. Forget about the tips and tricks, whether they work or not. Here's how I personally do it. 15% of the time I do drills. I choose one or two days per month to spend a few hours until exhaustion, drilling one to two to three to categories of moves on the bike. Maybe 30 minutes of wheelies, 45 minutes of fakies, 25 minutes of nose pick tail whips. I will fail often, 
on oh. most of them because I can't do nose pick tail whips yet. And 85% of the time I will go riding. And when I'm riding, I incorporate those wheelies, those fakies into my trail rides when appropriate. So nose pick tail whips, maybe not so much. Again, I can't land them yet. So Yes, you need to drill some if you want to maximize results, which brings us to shadow cost number two of tips and tricks and getting better immediately. Now, the sinister shadow cost of getting better instantly happens when you use instant result tips and tricks and you pick up a secondary bad habit or build up on top of an existing bad habits. So to be very clear, the tip never got rid of your bad habit. Is that possible? I mean, have you considered maybe you're able to do the tip, but not the fundamental. Now, my experience coaching hundreds of riders and speaking to tons of others is they secretly know that as an intermediate rider, you usually have some bad habits. And most riders do the very thing that hurts them in the long run using the band-aid technique when we sometimes have a root issue that we need to look at. And most riders, they feel they have to try this quick fix because you have limited time, because there's no other way. Actually, this is where I wanna draw the line between coaching and tips. Let's draw this line and draw it firmly. Most regular riders struggle for years stuck on skill plateaus. They're loaded up with extra belly fat, they suffer from arm pump, they spend extra hours a day scrolling, doom scrolling on social media, and they compensate by buying flashy bikes and tinkering with their settings endlessly and they talk about it forever and they actually aren't that good at mountain biking. And when they try that new tip, it's like they hit an ocean of cocaine. <laughs> In other words, they, they value new and exciting, but not better. They value new and exciting, but not better skills. And you can just keep getting tips almost endlessly, so they end up getting high and addicted to new stuff, new bike parts, new tips and tricks to try. And their skill set is an absolute mess and they have zero awareness. The problem is your body is a finely tuned machine and it takes what you give it and it uses what you give it. And ultimately, if you keep feeding it tips and not coaching, you will miss one thing that radical riders absolutely get. And radical riders are confident. They may have a nice bike or a muted nice bike like this one. Either way, they automatically do awesome stuff on the bike and they're the rider to look up to. Simple reason being is that instead of adding Band-Aid tips to their broken skill set, they get a diagnostic. And that's what I love about mountain bikers. We tend to be smart creatures. And the ones that love this channel and our approach here simply ask better questions than what tip do I need? Instead, they get coaching. And a coach gives them insight into what bad habit is lurking inside of their skill set right now. And they don't get offended, they get stoked. They're like excited because you see real intelligence is curiosity. It's not knowing something. Intelligence is about curiosity, not knowing something. And radical riders in Mountain Bike Academy seek more answers because they're curious. See, when I'm coaching most riders, many of them admit they have no idea what they're doing with jumping, cornering, drops. They just started riding 10 or 20 years ago and they've been sending it for decades. And when you get coaching instead of instant tips, you can suss out any bad habits and prevent them for longer, which also means you get to avoid shadow cost number three. Shadow cost number three of getting better instantly is fake success. Do you guys remember in 2020, before all the lockdowns, our economy was broke. But what happened was we had an environment where almost anyone could get money for cheap and get into business. And so failure wasn't amplified, it was actually muted. Then came hard mode. Lockdowns really forced lots of weaker businesses out of business. Some good ones went away too, but definitely the ones who never were really good business operators, they couldn't survive. So in other words, they had fake success. And fake success is super dangerous for mountain bikers like us. Now, I'm going to use one very easy example here. Let's say you want to improve cornering. Some coaches want you to oversimplify. They want you to drop your outside foot, lean your bike in, and just hold it there. Problem is you have to be an animal of an athlete for this to really work. Most riders see this and they think, great, this is what I've been missing, and completely neglect the fact that their core is weak. 
their hamstrings can't modulate their legs and they have to compensate by leaning on the bars. And they'll just have to use every bit of raw strength just to navigate a turn using this technique. So in fact, I have a friend who corners like this and I will never tell him to use a different way. One, because it works for him. And two, he's an extremely fit athlete at 38 years old. I'm strong enough to do this technique and I know it works for him because he's at least 30 to 50% stronger than me. The guy's 200 pounds of pure muscle and every bit of him is conditioned well. Now, here's the problem. You're not my friend. <laughs> so 1% of riders are. This guy's literally a specimen. So 99% of us spend three to six hours working at a desk and have the genetics of Bill Gates at 19 years old. So let's you know laugh together about it. I'm not picking on you or making fun of you. Seriously, my mom is a featherweight and my dad was 230 pounds and looked like a Gold's Gym guy. And I got my mom's jeans and, and her traps. I, I really like my traps. I'm, I'm not mad about it. So anyways, you do a technique that may not be right for you and if you're thinking it works, you might be getting fake success. You're not really optimizing for your body. And you spend thousands of dollars getting multiple bikes for different jobs on the trail, but you spend zero time or effort making your technique match your body. It's just the wrong way. And I've made this mistake myself because I know how fun it is to buy bikes and to tinker with them. And as I've grown older and my skills have shifted, I and my goals too, they've all shifted. I still deeply care about the riding like we all do here, but I'd rather be a radical rider who always has a plan, a process, and the freedom to practice in a way that makes it fun. Now, if that's you, subscribe to the channel. Let's go make it happen. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you on the next lesson. Peace.